A year later, <laughs> Q&A part two. <laughs> mm. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna do a second part, a part two to the Q&A we did last year. Uh, the Q&A was during my pregnancy and I wanted to kind of follow up now that we have almost a year. Next month will be a year since becoming twin parents. It's been a lot because obviously having twins is like insane and like just changed our whole life that's around drink wine. that's why we drink wine at night we're actually gonna make some dinner while we're talking to you guys usually when the twins go down is when we kind of have some dinner together and cook together and stuff so I figured it'd be great to kind of do that while answering you guys' questions I got some questions in the question box on Instagram and we're gonna answer a couple of them and make some dinner so I'm gonna make some salmon which is my favorite I could have salmon every day Today I'm just going to do a little lemon and I'm going to spread some Dijon mustard on it which I found on a recipe on Instagram and it's Dijon mustard, salt, pepper and then some crushed red pepper. It's very simple. You can't go wrong with salmon. I feel like salmon salmon's easy. We're going to do some Brussels sprouts. These are from Trader Joe's frozen section. But I like to make my Brussels sprouts inspired from Dig In. I love eating there and their Brussels sprouts are kind of like charred and they have like this sweet and spicy flavor so i add sriracha and maple syrup and call it a day oh and a little bit of salt and pepper they're fire so you want to like let it burn a little too like i like it a little charred um let's do a cup of rice let's see so you want to start with the question yeah are you planning to raise the twins to be trilingual i feel like everybody mm. asks us this because people know that morgan's french and he was born and raised there, so he, he's fluent, he speaks the language. You wanna lead on that? You go first, let's talk about Spanish. <laughs> so that's for yeah. sure happening already. Yeah, for sure. I do have a big, big interest in all my children speaking Spanish as their first language. It's very important to me, especially because my parents both speak Spanish, they don't speak English, and most of my family speaks Spanish, not English, so you know, I'd like for them to be able to communicate with their families. I speak to the twins in Spanish the entire day. So while Morgan's at work, I'm with the babies and I'm speaking Spanish to them. Everything that I say to them is in Spanish. And then English is gonna come to them. I mean, I learned English in school. I learned English like in kindergarten. So I wasn't, you know, speaking English at home or anything. So for sure right now, they're gonna be bilingual. As far as French. For me, it's not as important because I'm more removed from that culture than you are. Yeah. So I lived in France till I was 12. So for most of my childhood, I moved to New York and I've been here most of my life. So I'm primarily American and speak English and French is my first language, but it's not the language I use the most now. And the only person I speak French to is my mom. Right. So I do Ooh, wish good. That looks fire. <laughs> I do wish that they learn French and speak French, but I don't feel obligated right now yeah. to speak to them in French because I'm going to be their dad in English at the end of the day. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be their dad in English. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to encourage them to speak French. And because my mom still lives in France, right. if, if later when they're a little older, they go to France to visit her. At that point, when they're in France, they're only going to be speaking French. Yeah. So I feel like those experiences might accelerate that for them. Or they at least will show interest in wanting to learn it. Yeah. In which case, you can definitely guide yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I want to see the interest from them too. Yeah. I don't want to make it a prerequisite where like they have to be trilingual. Right, so we're going right. to like make sure they speak French. Right. I think English and Spanish are the most useful languages in America and it's great that they speak those two languages. Mm -hmm. And if they get French on top of that, great. Yeah, when they do speak Spanish to you, you definitely gonna understand what they're saying. Morgan can definitely hold a conversation in Spanish more than I can hold one in French. But um, yeah, I think that's, that answers Next the question. Next question. Next question, but wait, before we move on, the let's, salmon's ready let's and let's get some on. water boiling for the Brussels sprouts. All right, so next question. Um, at what week did you establish a routine for you postpartum? Um, I'm going to kind of alter that question a little bit and say that at what week we establish a routine. I feel like it's definitely a team effort when it comes to creating a routine because it has to work for both of us. I think when they were like four months, 
yeah. in December. The first three months, there's no routine. There's no routine. It's just chaos. It's chaos. <laughs> it's no sleep. It's, and then there's two babies that you haven't synced up yet because even though they're born it's tiny little creatures that you just want to keep alive yeah a hundred percent and you want to keep yourself alive i, I think at four months even though that's also when they go through regressions babies it's also hard to start routines then because it, it kind of feels like you're working backward because they're on another like agenda december was when we were like all right we how are we gonna do we need to get a routine going as best as possible they weren't fully sleeping through the night then no no but but pretty good they were waking up like once or twice it wasn't and with they some rough nights, night, but, but they were starting to to sleep through the night. We decided to base it off of him going back to work and also the fact that I wanted to start getting back into my workout routine. So we decided to switch to alternate every morning and we would go to the gym. So I was going to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Morgan would go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And that also kind of felt nice because we hadn't really had any morning routine set up. It was like whenever they woke yeah, up, was huge. we're going to wake up. It felt so good to alternate days. And by, by alternating days, we were also alternating mornings, which is something that we still do. Yeah. Since December to now, we just so alternate the way, mornings. The way it works is every other day, we switch who takes care of the babies in the morning. So one of us can go to the gym. So Monday, or just sleep in. Monday or sleep in yeah. or not have to wake up at 6 or 6.30 and, and have is, yeah. those two hours. So at six months, you introduced the idea of sleep training. Yeah. I had no idea what that meant. I know there's a lot of controversy around this topic. I wanted to do it because, again, for me, it's all about having them synced up and having some control over our day and my day because I'm alone with them all day. I don't have a nanny. I don't have childcare. I don't have anything of the sort. The key, the key is 3, 5, 10. Those are the numbers. Why do you just keep holding on to that? I, I read it somewhere. I, I Those are the numbers. Don't know the exact remember. thing, but basically you it check it. It doesn't matter where you write it, it works. <laughs> basically, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. After three minutes, you go back in there to reassure the baby. I love when he talks about That this. everything is okay. I'm an expert. Now. He's an expert now. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting it straight from the source. The babies are in the room next door and you're not hearing a peep right now because they're sleeping. Most of the time, as early as the first week we try this, by the third 10 minute stretch, they would eventually end yeah. up not crying anymore and going to sleep. And we definitely kept an eye so for- three, five, ten. remember that. <laughs> we definitely would keep an eye for like- these? Yeah, we could train them. We would keep an eye for like any cries that sounded different than like a fussy, I just want to be held cry. So the second key to this routine <laughs> is the actual sleep schedule training and i think like you said we introduced that at six months yeah and that was the other piece that i guess completed the sleep training and were was able to give us our life back <laughs> um and 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 actually allow us to have a routine because the first step to having a routine is making sure the babies have a routine yeah yeah. So you have to work around it. You can't create a routine that gets constantly interrupted by babies crying and needing you. So we created their routine first with the sleep training and then created our own routine. Yeah. And I that think sleep that... schedule became basically the foundation of our routine. Yeah, the foundation of our routine, the foundation of our relationship right now. <laughs> Everything revolves yeah. around that clock. I feel like the sizzle from the salmon is like going off right now. If there's one thing I learned from being like a singleton parent to twin is that I can't afford to not have a schedule with them you like can. because now i don't have any other help you know like we have our family and stuff obviously for certain things but like on the daily it's just me and it's just him so it's very crucial for us to have a routine the reason it. it's so crucial for us and especially for you is because the the time that you have for yourself is so limited right it has to be consistent yeah if it's all over the place and you don't know when you're gonna have that hour to do you know your <laughs> your taxes your <laughs> bills your call your mom like literally the most simple like, thing like right? you know wh when you're on with the kids you're on so whenever they're going down that's your pockets of time to do your other stuff right. so as much as you can know exactly when those times are going to be the better off you're going to be in succeeding to have a routine yes. right exactly Next question, and also let me tell you guys what I'm doing. I cut the Brussels sprouts in halves so that they can kind of cook on a flatter side. Um, and now I'm going to heat up some oil in the skillet, and then we're going to just not measure and just swivel around some sriracha and maple syrup with some salt and pepper. The salmon is almost done. The rice should be done, actually. 
The rice is done. The rice is done. I oh, you turned it off. Yep. Damn, you're like 10 steps ahead of me. Alright, next on. question. So, how do you find time to keep the relationship spicy and exciting while having babies and Leanna because we have a preteen? Should I, you want me to take that one? Yeah, let's do it. Again, you know, we try to... What's our, the tea, babe? What's the tea? Well, we try to find our time as much as possible to have our alone time. Yeah. You know, when... Uh, like right now. <laughs> with the babies and uh, Leanna, like you're not you're not keeping it spicy. You're you're just chilling with family, and that's what most of our time is. Right. So yeah. once or twice a month, we try to have a date night yeah. where somebody's at home watching the babies, and we're doing something together. We also make sure to put things in the calendar that we want to do for fun, and we try to hold you know hold ourselves to it. You know, like we start asking in advance for who can babysit. We're like in the in the chat room with our family, like hey guys. You know, we need a sitter for this day who's available, you know. You know, the spark is still there. Yeah. And it's not like all of a sudden, you know, we don't see each other the same way. For us, it's just about finding the time and yeah. carving out that alone time to make sure that we still have those moments where we're not just pouring into the kids. Yeah. You know, because we love the family time, but it has to be balanced with us being able to maintain that relationship. And every time we forget to make sure we have those dates, mm -hmm. things start to go left. Yeah, I You know, agree. it always gets our energy back <laughs> yeah. into place. And yeah. you know, if we haven't had a date in a while, chances are we're gonna get on each other's nerves. Yeah, that's how we keep the spark. We just try to, the same way we establish that routine for the babies and we like are on it with them and like their bedtime and everything, like it's the same way we look at our, you know, personal lives together without like the twins. And we're like, all right, how are we filling that up? Like what's coming up that's exciting for us like we both love music a lot so like definitely we go to a lot of music uh events whether it's concerts festivals like i said or anything like that what we like to do at home when we can't go out is just have date nights here so we order takeout we each watch like our own individual series that we like but we always have a series that we're watching together yep. together we watch a show together you know, sometimes we go outside, we have a little balcony, we hang out there, we just chill, talk, catch up on our day, talk about our goals. Has parenting together added any challenges to the relationship? Dun dun dun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> just a wear and tear. There's yeah. there's a wear and tear of sleep deprivation. Oh my god, the pouring, sleep deprivation? Pouring into babies, feeling super emotional about a million things. Feeling um, like you're never having, you know, becoming a fa done. facing being a parent and having a ton of emotional baggage, um, and just adjusting to, you know, absorbing like this huge life event into the rest of your life. Now, if you don't have the time to look at what your problems are in, in anything then the problems are just going to multiply and you still had, you know, the interest in making, uh, having a healthy relationship. A healthy partnership being good parents all those intentions were still there but it was hiding under the sleep deprivation you know like not feeling like we had enough time for ourselves like not even as a couple just like for him for me like things were just hard yeah, to the point where we hit a real low and we felt like neither of us were understood because again you know she's fighting for support from me and I'm fighting for support from her and we're both at capacity with nothing left in the tank. The very fact of being a twin parent, like we couldn't even give each other a break like that. Like, it, I don't know, it was just, it was just hard. I'm still here though. Still here. Next still question? Here. Yeah, next question. What are your favorite traditions culturally that you are excited to share with the twins? Oh, I like that question. Yeah, he loves this question. All right, so go ahead, you got it. So culturally for me, it's less about um, traditional culture it's less about like religious culture there's definitely parts of you know my identity and my culture that revolves around being jewish that i want them to not necessarily experience because i don't observe it but i want them to understand what that means yeah and you know they don't necessarily have to feel like they they're part of the jewish community or have to be involved in the jewish community or that you know they have to immerse their, themselves in jewish culture but i do want them to understand where their family came from, what it means to be Jewish, and hopefully one day they're gonna to want to be bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, but that's gonna be up to them. Like, you think they'll do it together? Yeah, oh I God. mean, I consider my culture like New York culture, like music culture, like sports culture, especially basketball, soccer. These are the cultures that I love, and 
I could just hope that they also appreciate that so I can expose them to you know all the things we love about living in New York City mm -hmm. that's the culture you know the culture that I want them yeah. to be a part of is the culture of the place they live in yeah and not necessarily attach our culture to something else that's abstract to them right. very curious to see what they end up you know identifying as or like you know what culture they lean more towards and that could also be an individual thing for Cora and for Enzo like we don't know we're just exposing them to everything and we're showing yeah. them what's important to us from our individual like culture and traditions and then letting them kind of have that you know mix for me traditionally I don't have anything other than like the music I listen to, like Spanish music is really close to my heart. So I play them a lot of Spanish music. So I feel like music for sure is one of those things that we're, we're going to expose them to. We're just kind of showing them the things that make us happy, that bring them yeah. joy. And like he has his things, like he said, from his Jewish traditions. I have my stuff from my Dominican culture. Yeah. I think that's really Our culture it. is based on um, the things we love Yeah. and not necessarily like our ethnicity or right. our religion. Right or where our family's from. Okay, so this will be the last question and then I'll show you guys how the dinner came out because it's looking fire. So the question is, what's something we don't see eye to eye on? Well, I don't know if they meant about the babies or... Well, you know, we have... I think we have different expectations of what we expect each other to do. In and terms of the baby or...? The in terms of the baby, oh. yeah. At first, I felt like because I go to work every day and she takes care of the babies. My responsibilities relating to taking care of the babies had to be lesser than what she thought it should be. So, you know, I was often going, well, you know, I have all this work to think about and I got I to bring home the bacon and make sure the money's taken care of so you take care of everything else. And I think to your perspective, you're like, well, no, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't work like that. Even though we kind of established what that was going to look like prior to having the babies, once we had them and things got really complicated because, you know, he started going back to work, I was at home with them and I was still having some resistance around being the primary caretaker. Like, I feel like I wanted to do so many things and suddenly I was making up these stories in my head that like I wasn't being supported, which wasn't necessarily the case. I just think that we weren't really communicating as to what that looked like in our everyday and like long term and all that stuff. We just kind of had this like narrative of like, yeah, you're going to work and I'll be home with the twins. Cool. We don't have to pay for childcare. But, you know, him being sleep deprived, still navigating being a new dad and then going back to work, thinking about bringing home the bacon, like literally he's trying to be a provider. Our biggest struggle yeah. was realizing that our problem wasn't in my problem wasn't in him and his problem wasn't in me and it wasn't in the babies either like the problem in itself is becoming new parents like having twins navigating that um and trying to like survive once we noticed that the problem was kind of outside of us and we had to look at it as something outside of us and figure out okay well that's the problem over there not here how do we tackle that because it's causing a huge problem and and you know honestly like we were just picking at each other like we were definitely like deviating from like our harmony for sure and there was a time when she could take 20 minutes explaining her point of view and i would take 20 minutes explaining mine and we're like and we would no. still be like yeah. no and it, <laughs> we were just hitting a wall every it, time it, every it time came every time. to a point where we really had to um speak our truth yeah say all the things Everything that were on our, our chest. chest like we literally had a night where we were like didn't hold anything back and we just like dropped it on one another it was, it was almost felt, like at that point yeah. we didn't feel like we had to agree yeah we just felt like yeah, yo yeah. i need i need to i like i need to say my truth and i need, I need to get this hear, off my chest i need you to hear like what i'm about to say to you and i don't mm -hmm. care if it's gonna hurt or if it's gonna be tough to say but i'm gonna say it Parents sometimes you can't be rational and, like, and, and and careful with how you feel you just gotta let it come out, just gotta come out. and that night everything came out and i think we both kind of looked at each other after everything came out and we're like I finally understand you like we yeah. kind of just like and then we went to sleep and since then we've just I don't know locked in, like. <laughs> we keep tapping into that conversation to remind ourselves like what we need from each other the last thing I'll say about that is that we both I think through that conversation that night realized like we're not both gonna be at 100% every day some days yeah. you're at 70 I'm at 30 I'm at zero and you're at a hundred. I don't know. I think after that conversation, we're like, you know what? Oh, you're at 20. It's okay. You know, today I feel good. I got this. Or like, 
I don't know. We just understand our needs more, I think. Yeah. I think we just kind of know when we're feeling a little empty, when we need a little more support. Um, and we also know the root of where our frustrations are coming from, yeah. which is a big game changer. Like now when I look at him throughout the day and I see something, I'm like, all right, I'm picking up on that. Like I, from that conversation, from that conversation, I kind of remember like, yeah. yeah. And now we're good. Yeah. We're good. I feel good about the achievement of just them turning one and us being able to be good parents for one year. You know, <laughs> it's like, you f I feel like I need a medal. Like, yo, you made it to one year. <laughs> As a twin parent. It's like, like when people quit <laughs> drugs and they celebrate one year, it's like, yo. Can we get some chips? <laughs> yeah, like, can I get a medal for, for, for just like a bronze medal for entry level one year? Um, yeah. Yeah. We did that. Pretty good. <laughs>